I, I don't see how people can say that they're climate leaders and um, favor parking at this this point. Hi, I'm Tony Jordan from the Parking Reform Network, and that was Lori Drosty, city councilor in Berkeley, California. Since 2015, Lori has been working to eliminate car parking requirements in Berkeley, and on January 26th, city council will make their decision. I recently spoke to Lori to find out more about what they're doing. The month. So we have um, the Planning Commission proposal, um, which eliminates off-street parking minimums for all new projects, except in sort of the dangerous hillside uh, region um, and in areas where the road is less than 26 feet. Um, and then we have our staff recommendation, uh, which eliminates uh, off-street parking for uh, new projects with 10 or more units. Um, and then we have another council member floated uh, a different proposal. I asked Lori how she came to propose these reductions, and here's what she had to say. I had done a lot of research around what makes housing so expensive, and, um, and so I went at it actually from that point of view about why you know it, it costs so much to live uh, in, in California, and actually throughout the United States this is an issue, and it didn't make sense to me that we were mandating parking. Uh, when people wouldn't necessarily want it. So um, I really sort of pushed this measure forward during a time when, when people weren't really talking about parking and how it relates to housing costs. Um, and of course, there, there are huge climate issues too that are associated with parking. It's common for cities to tie parking reductions to other mandates like affordable housing. Lori says this is the wrong way to frame the issue. That, you know, that's sort of akin to saying, um, all right, well, you, you have a asbestos in, in this building, so we'll remove the asbestos if you give us something else, right? So the idea that uh, parking is at all a net benefit is uh, ridiculous. And so you know, if people want to have parking, then they need to justify why they should have parking, right? We see the impacts that has to our climate. We see the impacts it has to housing affordability. And so that conversation has changed a lot over the past few years. Whereas before they're like, okay, well, we'll, you know, it's sort of framing it as a giveaway to a developer. Um, well, we'll, okay, well, you can take away your parking, but you have to give us something for it. And now the conversation is, this is not good for our society, period. So I think that Lori is right. The conversation has changed in many cities, and here's why she thinks that's happened. So now we see a significant amount of young people coming to meetings saying, there's a connection here. There's a connection between our housing costs, which we are burdened by, um, and parking. Um, there's a connection between climate change and parking. I, right? I think that the tenor has changed because there's been a lot more younger people involved in our meetings and people really <clears throat> seeing this issue play out on our streets, literally seeing homeless people sleeping on the sidewalk and saying, okay, we need to do something about providing homes for people as well. What's Lori's advice to other parking reformers who want to eliminate car parking mandates in their cities? Really making the connection between um, climate change, for instance, and um, parking. There's a, there's a lot of evidence around that. Um, connecting people around housing costs and parking, and also revenue for cities, right? Um, parking is dead space. Um, and so we're, we're able to get a lot more revenues for cities to, to um, institute or uh, augment uh, newer existing programs. So I, I think really focusing on that. Um, and also I think the language around it needs to be, um, needs to be clear. So we, again, we're just saying, we're not gonna require you to build spaces you don't want to build. Lori mentioned several times in our conversation that they're eliminating parking requirements, not banning parking. Some of her constituents live in the Berkeley Hills where narrow roads and windy streets combine with fire risk to pose specific 
hazards. She stressed that the city has been thoughtful and deliberate about the particulars of this policy and argues that reducing car parking requirements isn't a radical thing at all. I really tried to make this a policy that um, that can resonate with every resident of Berkeley because it's actually good policy, right? So you don't have to, you know, there's this idea that this is something really extreme and ideological and only for people who take the bus or who ride bikes. And what I'm trying to say is it's not. Like this is the future. <laughs> we need to imagine how we wanna create a city, not for just now when people are driving, that's true, a lot of younger people aren't, but we have to also envision our cities in 50 and 100 years. Berkeley City Council will hear these proposals on January 26th. Here's how you can weigh in. Well, I, I certainly would recommend writing into council at cityofberkeley.info and saying that you support our planning commission's proposal. Um, that is the most progressive uh, parking recommendation of the three. Um, and that uh, eliminates uh, off-street parking minimums, except for those very treacherous um, hill, uh, hillside regions. Um, we also have uh, parking maximums on the plate as well. And, um, and so we have, we have a, a, a really robust package. And I think our planning commission did a really tremendous job. I hope you found this informative. If you'd like to support more interviews like this and other resources for parking reformers, join the Parking Reform Network at parkingreform.org join.